Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. God bless you all in Jesus' name. A blessed evening to you all. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice. I give glory to God for his grace that he bestowed upon my life to come on your way this afternoon in order for us to discuss the word of our Father, the spiritual food that we need in order for us to grow spiritually. You know, as the children of God, God expects us to study his word daily. Hallelujah. Before I proceed, let us have a word of prayer. I don't know. I give you glory, honor, and adoration. Thank you for this great opportunity you've given unto me. Blessed be your name in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, I empty myself. I don't really have anything to offer. Come and speak through me. The word, oh God, that will bring transformation. And let everyone that will listen to the sound of my voice not remind the same in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious and faithful Father. In Jesus' glorious name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the topic of my brief message this afternoon is titled, See as God Sees. See as God Sees. As children of God, God expects us to see the way he sees things. God expects us to see in his own perspective, the way he sees things, that's how he expects us to, you know, to see things. You see things around you the way God sees it. Hallelujah. And when I talk about that, I mean you replacing your wrong belief with the right belief based on the word of God. The only way you can see the way God sees things is one, through the word of God. Through the word of God. For you to see things the way God sees things, you must be a student of the word. Why? Because the word of God is God. The word of God is the will of God. Whatsoever we find in the word of God, it's the things that God wants us to embrace. And knowing it, it will make us to see things the way God sees things. What did the Bible say? Let us see quickly the book of 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. It's a popular scripture. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 says, this one is uh, King James Version. It says, study to show the self approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. So for you to see things the way God sees it, you must be a student of the word of God. You must study the word of God constantly. We live in a generation where Christians embrace the physical food and neglect the spiritual food. If you are not a student of the word of God, there is no way you can dilute things from the spirit realm and it will manifest in the physical realm. For you to receive as a revelation from God, you must be a student of the word. And when you receive, it will enable you to see the way God sees things. The reason why we lament today, the reason why at times we are so confused today, when we look at things, we don't know what to do. We don't know the right thing to, to say. We don't know the right step to take. One of the reasons is because we are seeing things the way the worldly people see it. We see it with the natural eyes. We see it as in the way God does not see it. So for you to be able to see things the way God sees it, you must be a student of the word of God. Hallelujah. The number two I wrote, you must constantly spend time in praying to God Almighty. Prayer is very, very important. Why? Prayer is divine communication to God. You talking to God and God talking back to you. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 15, it says something, 5, 5 verse 17, it said, pray without ceasing. 
For you to see things the way God sees it, you must constantly engage yourself in prayer. In this scripture, it told us there is something like I'm, I'm on break. There is something like I'm on, I'm on leave. There is something like I prayed yesterday or this morning I won't pray again. Yeah, the Bible is making us to understand. Pray without ceasing. You must pray constantly. So when you are the type that engage yourself in pray constantly, you will see things the way God sees it. Why? Because in the presence of prayer, revelation will also be revealed. You will get to know the mind of God deeper and deeper. You will get to see things the way God sees it. You'll be understanding how God sees the things that you have been seeing in a different perspective. Then the, your way of seeing unbelief and your wrong way of seeing will not be converted to the right way of seeing based on the word of God. So prayer does a lot in the life of believers that is ready to see the way God sees things. How are you seeing things that surround you? How did he see it? Have you been seeing things the way God sees it? Let me tell you one thing. That situation that does not make you sleep in the night. If only you can see the way God is seeing it, you start celebrating. You will start jubilating. Hallelujah. You will start celebrating if you can see it the way God sees it. Number two, what I said, you must constantly spend time to pray. Then number three, how to see the way God sees things, what to do. Number three, you need a helper that will help you. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, there is no way you can see the way God sees things. Why? Because God is a spirit. God is does not appear physically in a physical body. He is a spirit. So how can you not start seeing things? Yes, you pray. Yes, you study. But without the help of the Holy Spirit, you cannot see things the way God sees it. That is the reason when Jesus left, he told the disciple, he said, I won't leave you like orphan. When I go, I'm going to tell my father. Why? Because he has been here in the body. He has lived on earth the way we are living now. He understands on earthly things. He has experience it. So he said, when I go, I'm going to tell my father that you need a help. You need somebody that will help you, that will live in you. I have been with you, helping you, but not that I'm not living. Someone needs to replace me to help you. So the person that replaced Jesus to help us is the person of the Holy Spirit. You can see that in the book of John, when you read John 15, 15 verse 26. He said, I will send you a helper, a comforter. The one that will tell you, that will show you who I am. He will tell you about me. So you need a help. In case you be seeing things the way others see it, the way unbelievers see it. I encourage you this afternoon, embrace the grace and walk more with the Holy Spirit so that it can help you to begin to see things the way God sees it. When you find yourself in the front of the Red Sea, God expects you to see that Red Sea as a tyrant. And for you to be able to operate in that dimension, the help of the Holy Spirit is needed. Hallelujah. The help of the Holy Spirit is needed. God bless you, my wonderful Pastor Brenda. Please, drop a comment if my network is stable. If it's not stable, so that I can switch to my, so my phone network. Just drop a comment on the comment section. Are you hearing me? Where is the network okay? Please let me know. Hallelujah. The third one I said... The third one I said, you need the help of the Holy Spirit for you to see the way God sees things. Hallelujah. The number for your time is very important. You must spend your life with God. You must spend time with God. You must spend time in the secret place. This is it. God has been drawing my attention to remind the believer. Oh, God needs their attention personally in the secret place. For you to see things the way God sees things, you must spend time. You must dwell in the secret place of the Most High God so that you will be able to know the things in the deep. The way you see things in the deep, when you not see it in the physical realm, you see it the way God sees it. Hallelujah. The Bible says the secret belongs to the Lord, but there are things that are revealed. It's when you spend your life because time is life. It's when you spend your time, it's when you dwell in that secret place where God can communicate with you, where God can speak to you. Hallelujah. That is where the deep things of God will be unraveled to you. 
you will begin to see the physical things the way God sees it. If you don't dwell, you don't stay, if you knock and go, if you go and complain, you can't get the revelation that will enable you to see things the way God sees things. Hallelujah. Then let us look at some things. How did God see things? How did God see things? Yes, I make us to understand that. And, ah, the way for you to see the way God sees things. I just gave us an, an explanation. Then now let's move forward. How did God see things? How is God seeing you? When God sees you the way you are now, how do you think that God sees you? When God looks at you, you are frying a cara, you are cooking my mind. How did God see you? No, but one thing that I stated here, I said, when God sees you, he sees himself. When God sees you, he's not seeing what others are seeing about you. God sees you, he sees himself. When he sees you, he sees himself. When you are walking on the road, God is seeing you as he's seeing himself. How did I know the Bible gets it clear to us? When you see what the Bible says in the book of Genesis, when you read Genesis 26 to 28, we see that God created those with his own image and likeness. God sees you as someone that is perfect. God sees you as someone that is a winner. God does not see you as a failure. God does not see you as someone that is frustrated, not at all. The reason why at times you look at yourself and you come to a conclusion that I'm a failure is because you are seeing yourself not the way God sees you. You are seeing yourself based on the situation that surrounds you. You are seeing yourself based on what the people around you is saying concerning you. But when you see yourself the way God sees you, you will know that God himself is looking at you as himself. Because he creates you with his own image and likeness. Number two, what I stated here, he sees you that you are wonderfully made. And you are perfect. You are perfect. You are fearfully made. There was no mistake. See, the Bible stated it in the book of Psalm 139 verse 14. We can just glass it. Hallelujah. Let us quickly read it. Glory be to Jesus. Psalm 139 verse 14. You are wonderfully made. You are fearfully made. If I see how the, the good news gave the explanation... If we don't get it right, I will go to King James. Hallelujah. 139 verse 14. Let's see what the Bible says here. It said, I praise you because you are, you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it. I know it, it, it with all my heart. But when you see what the King James said, it said, I praise you because what? I am fearfully made. I am wonderfully made. That is what the Bible says. So when God sees you, he sees you as someone that is he created, wonderfully made. Let me read it from uh, King James because I love the way King James puts it. He said, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works and that my soul knoweth right away. He said, I will praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God, why he was creating you, you know that he was creating him. He was so careful. He made sure that he created you in a way that you come out so perfect. There was nothing like mistake. There was nothing like mistake. If you see yourself today, maybe you are passing through a, as a, any challenge. God is not seeing you that way. God, he created you so wonderful, so beautiful. You can look at yourself in the mirror and say, no, I'm a little bit short. I, I wish my heart is more than this. Let me tell you, the way you are, that is how it pleases God to create you. The way you are, that is how God decorates you. That is how he designs you. You are wonderfully made. You are fearfully made. Don't allow anybody to talk you down. Don't allow people to see maybe the defects that you have. Maybe because, maybe... 
At times goes on in your life, on a journey of life. Maybe something happened that now disfigure you. For example, like myself, at times I find it difficult to come alive. Why? Because many years ago I had an accident that disfigured my teeth. So I was so somehow like mm -mm, I don't want to come to as in life to to as it to send the messages like this. Or say God said this mean I said, did I do anything wrong by saving you? What about if you have died? Then I say, Baba, here I am. So if there is anything that this we go, you my dear, God is not seeing that thing, no. He is still seeing you the way he created you. Because it is your spiritual life that matters very well. All your, your physical, your physical being, what we see in the physical, it is possible to be changed. Somebody can use cream and the color will change. Somebody can wear high shoe and it will be taller. But when it comes to about the spirit, you remain the way you are, the way God created you. So you're wonderfully made. You are perfect in the sight of God. Then uh, number three, what I stated, I brought out the story of Sarah and Abraham. In the book of Genesis 18, if you read Genesis 18, 1 to 15, but I would like to read Genesis, Genesis 18, 15, uh, 9 to 15, about Sarah. When when the angel of the Lord visited Abraham and Sarah, how did God see Sarah? Despite the age, Sarah was old. At time, the time she is, she was right by that time, she had passed the stage of evil taking a bad giving birth. People in her age rates, they have great grandchildren already. A woman of 90 years. If you give birth when she was 20, just calculate it. Grand, great grandchildren, she must have. Had. But how did God? How did God see Sarah? Let's see. I will read from good news. Hallelujah. I want to read from, from 9 to 15. If you are there, you want to get the full story, just read 1 to 15. But I will read 9 to 15 now. Then they asked him, Where is your wife, Sarah? She is there in the tent. He answered. One of them said, Nine months from now, I will come back and your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Sarah was behind him at the door of the tent. Listen, Abraham and Sarah were very old and Sarah, uh, and Sarah had stopped having a monthly period. So Sarah laughed to herself and said, Now that I am old and worn out, can I still enjoy sex? And beside my husband is old too, 13. Then the Lord asked Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, can I, can I, why did, can I really have a child when I am so old? Then he now said in 40, is there anything too hard for the Lord? As I said, nine months from now, I will return and Sarah will have a son. 15, the last day. But Sarah was afraid. She denied it. I did not laugh. She said, Yes, you did, he replied. The Bible said at this time, Sarah was already in the state of monopause. She can't bear children again. When she heard from the angel, she laughed and said, just look at me. There is nothing left. I'm old, even my husband. Everything has why not. Nothing is functioning again. There is the battery as weak. Nothing can happen. But the angel of the Lord laughed. He says, is there anything too hard for me to do? Why? Because God sees Sarah as a new child, as he, he created her, irrespective of her physical age. But God sees, sees Sarah as somebody that still carries a womb that is very fresh, that can still be a fourth fruit. So I encourage you, see that situation the way God sees it. When you see that situation the way God sees it, you will celebrate every time. You will not complain. It might be that in your family you are the Sarah. I want you to see yourself as God sees you. See yourself and tell yourself, ah, there is nothing too hard for God to do. He did it for Sarah and he will also do it for me. Which eyes are you using to see your marriage? Which eyes are you using to see that child that probably have a, have a child in school or have a child in in so our heads? How are you seeing the child? I want you to see that situation, see that child the way God sees it, and when you do, you will not complain. 
When you do, when you see it the way God sees it, you will celebrate. What about the story in the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel 37? We saw the story of the dry bones. Anything that is dried in your life, God is seizing, seeing it as something that is living, that is alive, that can still be, that can still be used. The old bones we are dry. We see uh, the book of uh, Ezekiel 37. Read from one to the end because of time. The Bible says the old bones were dry. But a prophecy came and the old bones came back to life. God sees those dry things in your life. He sees those situations that are dry as the things that are still very, very fresh. The reason is because you are seeing it with your physical eye. Let us see some examples before I ramble. Let's see the life of Elisha. Elisha and his, uh, uh, his servants. In the book of 2 Kings, if you read from 6, 2 Kings 6, you read 12 to 27. It's a, a story that we will see that ah, the way men in the Bible saw things the way God sees it. What happened in the story? If I don't want to go there, let me just give us a story. The Bible makes us to understand the king of Syria was always having a plan, you know, to come against the children of Israel. But Elisha was always seeing it. Anytime he planned and set a trap, the man of God will see it and reveal it. And it comes to a time the king now shall Abba, who are more gods that is revealing the secret? What we are saying in the secrets. Who are more gods that is revealing it? One of them now rose up and said, No, no, for so there is a man of God called Elijah. That he's seen everything, even down to inner, he, 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 down to your inner chamber. He sees everything. What did the king do? What did he do? He gathered his chariots and horses to go. When he heard the bat where Elisha was staying, he went to the place. He told them in the night they surrounded everything. And when the servants woke up in the morning, the Bible said she saw the people with a physical eye, and they were much. And she went. He went to his master and said. We are going to come and look at the people that are outside. They are much. They have come. So that servant, that was the last day they will live on earth. Ah, Elisha says something to God. Lord, I know that this my servant is blind. I know that he is seeing this situation the way the worldly people see things. Open his eyes. Let him see. Physically, the servant was seen. When Elisha prayed, God now opened his spiritual eyes. And the servant now sees that. They that were with them was more than the physical chariots and horses that was there. If you read the story, you will know what happened. As they come, Elijah, Elisha prayed and said, Lord, blind these people's eyes. Let them not see anymore. He blind their eyes. Why? Elisha see the situation. The way God sees it. He sees it from the spirit realm. He sees it with the perspective of God. He sees it and he speaks the way God would have speak if he was there physically. If he was there physically. So see those things the way God sees it. See those things the way God sees it. That is how God wants you to see it. Also, the life of David and Goliath. In the book of First Samuel 17, you see, with not the story of uh, David and Goliath. The Bible says, for 40 good days, Goliath was rolling a bath, telling the Israelites, hey, bring us somebody that can stand and fight with me. Anybody that come, if he succeed, mm, we will become you people's slaves. If, if I succeed, the same thing will also happen to you people. For 40 good days, the Israelite armies were seeing Goliath with the physical eye. They didn't see the Goliath with the eyes of God. But when the small boy who have no God, who knows how God sees things come, although physically Goliath was a giant, although physically arm himself with different battle has to fight, my God. But David sees him the way God will see him. He look at him and call him all circumstance Philistine. 
It make him to understand that although you came with everything, but there is something that I come with. I am here with the name of the Lord God, who, who as you who know how to keep covenant. That is how David, that is how he responds to Goliath. And at the end of the day, what was the result? He knocked Goliath down because he sees things. He sees that situation the way God sees it. How are you seeing the Goliath that surrounds your life? Are you like the Israelite that was afraid? The armies of the Israelite that was afraid for 40 good days? Are you like the brother of David who wanted to drag David and say, where are you going? You are too small, too small, but we know that you are too like of Asabi. Are you like that? I encourage you this afternoon. Change your way of seeing things. Begin to see it the way God sees things. Goliath will only come like an echo, not a voice. Goliath will only come to echo in order to bring fear to you so that you will not be able to stand. But by the time you see things the way God sees it, ah, you will see that everything is possible with God. It's only with man that things are not possible. So learn how to see things the way God sees it. We also see the story of Paul and Sarah in the book of Acts. We see the book of Acts 16, 25 to 26. These men were arrested because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, when they find themselves in the prison, they see that situation the way God will see it. They didn't complain. They started praising God. My God. If only you can see things the way God sees it. Ah, my God will manifest and showcase himself. You yourself, you will be so surprised. These men, they did see themselves that they were inside prison. They do, I believe, look at what the Holy Spirit is saying. <laughs> they begin to see that prison as five-star hotel. They begin to see that prison with different air condition. Mats around them. They begin to see that prison as governor's house, as white house. And they will say to themselves, what will I do now? Let us praise this God. They begin to praise God. And as they praise the Lord, why were they able to praise God? Why? Because they see that situation the way God will see it. As they praise them, the Bible said there was a rushing mighty wind. When the wind landed, ah, the wrong foundation was broken. The door was open. It was not only both of them that were saved. Go and read it by yourself. Read it over and over. Both the prisoners Every one of them at the end, they were saved. If these men have seen their situation, the way men like them will seize it, they themselves wouldn't have been liberated. Left alone the people that were there. But because they seize the situation the way God will seize it, they were liberated from that bondage. Because they see the way God sees things. In that prison where they found themselves, they started releasing new album. If only you can see things the way God sees things, my God. You will celebrate. You will give glory to God. When you find yourself in any challenge of life, what you will say to yourself, my God, what a privilege for God to take his glory in my life. You will know that God has come to take his glory. You will know that mm -mm, this thing that has happened to me is because I am the next in line to testify because no temptation, no testimony. We complain every day. My wonderful Pastor Ida, I'm so honored to have you. God bless you, man. Thank you very much for joining me to do life. You will begin to thank God. You begin to celebrate because you see those things the way God sees it. Have you been waiting in the waiting room seeking for the fruit of the womb? See yourself the way God sees Sarah. This first Sarah was 90 years old. God saw the womb as a fresh womb that is still capable of generating at generation. God still sees Sarah as a woman who will go to labor room and not die, but give birth to Isaac. My God. See the way God sees things. Oh my God. We also see it in the life of Jesus. When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus in the book of John 11, you read from 40 downwards. 
Lazarus was dead for four good days. Oh, for, for I believe the family must have canceled his name for the family diary. The sister have put on black. The people who came to who, who came for the burial, some of them they have returned back home. The canopy outside, they must have removed the canopy. Then Jesus arrived. When Jesus get to the tomb of Lazarus, he did not see Lazarus as a dead man for four days. He looked at Lazarus as a, as a man who just traveled to space. Let me call it that way. Who, who have been relaxing for four days. And it just started, does it make sense? If an honorary man just gone to the grave, they told you that a man has been dead for four days. And you come there with the first thing you do was to start thanking God. For waiting now. Why will you be thanking God? We are telling you that the man has been buried for four days. Why? Because Jesus see that situation the way his father would have seen it. He see the situation the way he wants you to see that situation in your life right now. That thing that look as if he has been in the grave. There is nothing to write to me about that situation. Huh? God wants you to see it that it's a fresh one. He wants you to see that situation is not dead, it's relaxing. God is bringing it back to life. If only you can arise tonight, embrace that grace that will be credited into you and begin to see things the way God sees it. What is that thing? Is it that you've come to a level you can no longer pray? Don't look at it the way the, 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 the physical eyes will see things. Use the spiritual eyes to see it. You begin to say to yourself, seven times a righteous man will fall, but it shall rise again. I encourage you, see the things the way God sees things. What God expected of you. See others the way God sees them. When you see others the way God sees them, you'll be able to be patient with people. You'll be able to show love to people because that is what God does to us. You'll be able to be calm. So I encourage you briefly with this message. Effort from now, see things the way God sees it. And you will continue to testify in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. By the grace of God, if Jesus started to come, some of that day, I will also come on your way. Let me just have a word of prayer. Faithful and glorious Father, we are super excited. Your spirit have released a revelation again for us to see things the way you see it. Daddy, blessed be your name in the name of Jesus Christ. Adonai, I pray that this grace, oh God, that your son Jesus Christ has credited into our life, oh God, by his sacrifice that he paid on the cross of Calvary. He we will continue Continue to embrace it in the name of Jesus Christ. Daily as we live, we will see things the way you see it. Whatsoever that anyone is passing through will no longer bring them down in the name of Jesus because they will continue to see the situation the way you see it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, glorious and faithful Father. So you will all be praised in Jesus' glorious, wonderful name. We pray with thanksgiving. God bless you all. I sincerely appreciate everyone. Thank you very much. I'm so honored. My adorable Pastor Ida, God bless you. I love you, you know. Thank you very much, and Pastor Brenda, for the great privilege you've given to me. May God bless you. And to every member of Tender Messes of God, I love you all. Thank you very much for believing the grace of God upon my life. God bless you. Remain blessed. Bye for now.